and take into consideration the Saudi missile deal, you know, with, with China and how secret it was and how it was concluded. Today we have uh, serious distrust of the way negotiations are dealt with. Uh, what you talk about, it is funny when we look at you. We, we really like you and we really <laughs> trust you, but we are not really sure about, you know, the ways you follow sometimes. So in this thinking, we are much closer to the Israeli thinking than to the American thinking. I'm saying my personal view. <laughs> okay, you talk about engagement, but we can't think about something called engagement without, you know, contracting and consummation. And so what have you gotten out <laughs> what have you gotten out of this engagement? Uh, you know, if we take into consideration those two, those two sessions you've had with Iran, then the Iran, we said before, and you could look at any, ex with, with any exchange of the GCC, you would see through intelligence that we have already said before that Iran would be stubborn, Iran would not deliver, Iran would look at aura and status that you, five plus one, sat with great Iran, but without giving any price for that, and then they would renege on. They would play accept and renege. Accept, go in the media, they accept. They, they are you know, t treated as a power, you know, equal power, as, they, as Ahmadinejad says. But at the end, they pay nothing. Then they have this you know, uh, measure called the, uh, the faqih, the murshid, who would say you know, the national interest of the Muslim community says no. And that's exactly what they did. This is all in our reports. And in, I don't think you know American diplomats are stupid not to know that, but you wanted to try, here you are. And <laughs> uh, so it, is, it, it looks to us like, you know, uh, you know the Julia Roberts uh, movie, The Running Bride? Iran looks like, the, <laughs> no matter <laughs> how serious about engagements you are as the second party, I think you will. You would, you would need to take, you know, this bride to a Taliban Sharia court someday. <laughs> and you know, in a Taliban Sharia court, is flogging. Now, have we had any, exp have we not learned from the experience of Saddam Hussein, of Slobodan Milosevic? Is Ahmadinejad, you know, saner than them, you think? I don't know. I mean, we had only two, one hour. Four Kuwaiti leaders on the 28th of, on Valentine's Day, by the way, Valentine's Day, coming to con congratulate the Kuwaiti Emir to, on his accession to, to, to rulership in Kuwait. Four well, you know, well, well, well seasoned people, you know, leaders who have met and dealt with Iran throughout all their lives, people in their 60s and 70s and 80s. And they sat with him, and for one hour, they assessed that he was seriously mad. He was mad, but he was serious about his madness, okay? The next thing is the Kuwaiti Emir met with Hosni Mubarak and told him that four hours later. And then Hosni Mubarak flew to King Abdullah and told him. So we actually assessed, you should have called us that day and we would have told you. But again, you wanted to wait and see the bride, here is the bride. <laughs> Now, can we, deal, can we deal with Iran? Iran, for us, in a matrix of threats. We have threats in the, in the GCC, and those threats are you know, tangible ones. You have military, you have asymmetric terrorism and subversion. You have a crime, you have uh, drugs, you have illicit, uh, illicit industries, you know that. And then you have intangible ones. We have passage of time, you know chances, strategic opportunities. We have influence and we have national character. And then we all share, as GCC and Iran and Iraq and Yemen, you know, uh, probable, uh, probable national disaster. All these are threats to us. But they are, and then you have water. Then you have things, a lot of things. And then you have this sense of development, the eagerness to develop. And in all these, on this list, besides, you know, earthquakes, because although, <laughs> Iran registers as number one. Iran is even cause of disasters with regard to earthquakes because they're not, they cannot manage them. And then tomorrow when we have Bushehr, imagine the pollution we will have in the area. 
So Iran registers in all of these, and we have to really address each one of them. Do the Iran, the question for us, do the Iranians, are the Iranians serious about getting a security arrangement? With regard to asymmetric, on daily basis, we discover revolutionary guard cells. But we don't declare them because we don't want a, a quick fight with Iran over that. No, we just handle them diplomatic channels. We daily find, you know, cells. And we have the capabilities. And when we talk about engagement, you engaging with us, we basically have, as GCC nations, besides Saudi Arabia and Iran, we have the full commitment, almost the full commitments of NATO. But undeclared, and on a bilateral basis, why do we have bilateral, bilateral relationships better with the United States, with Britain, with France, with other? Because there is a commitment, and this commitment are proven. So we really trust such commitments, and we can build upon them. But we really need to use some type of a stick, some type of a Taliban Sharia law court, you know, with Iran someday. They call it surgical, they call it whatever they call it, but someday I think we, we're going to reach that stage. And in a sense today, all the publicity in the area about a covert cooperation between Saudi Arabia and Israel or Kuwait and Israel and whatever, there is a lot of truth to that sense of, 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 of uh, urgency that we do not see in those guys sitting on the you know, rooms of Geneva to reach an agreement with Ahmadinejad and uh, Mr. Khamenei. So unless we really look at the urgency of the matter from our perspective, how close it is to our hearts. To our hearts is my, is my home, personally, uh, is, is, is within probably uh, the shortest, uh, the shortest surface-to-surface -surface missiles carried on a Revolutionary Guard boat. This is how, how close it is to us. So it is close to us in Kuwait, in Abu Dhabi, in Dammam, in Saudi Arabia, in Rasta and Noura. It is also close to them, if we were to use. But we don't have surface-to-surface -surface missiles. So the real, we don't have military conscription. We don't have inflated defensive budgets, you know, uh, in, in, in proportion to our development uh, budgets. You see, our development budgets are much larger than. In Iran, it is the, uh, it's the opposite. So the, the, we really have to go into the, uh, to, to, to the, to, to the depth of this, of this matter, matter of, of, getting, but we have, of getting a security arrangement with Iran. But at the same time, we do not have other solution except to go to war against Iran, all of us. So we really have to think seriously. But in order to think of it, we have to really think of it seriously, how urgent it is, how close it is to our security. We really, we really have, if you talk about co affinitive interests, there is, what is it? You know, you have the, the center of Arabia, Riyadh, was hit by 39 missiles during that war. And, but Riyadh did not respond. So we really have that restraint, that strategic restraint. But we, can we be as restrained as in 1991? I doubt it. Thank you very much. Thank you.